Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Stop sending us garden worlds, written by Skull Bomb Raging. Today was another meeting of the Council to discuss the recent achievements of humanity. A detachment of Humanity Unified Space Force had successfully taken down a strategic target considered to be completely impenetrable. There was a jovial conversation over the table. Just about everybody seemed to be having a good time. Except for the representative of Humanity, Councillor Heinrich. He was in a bit of a sour mood. It was in that moment that Senior Councillor Razak spoke. We here had a great many suggestions for awards of this commendation, but I think I have discovered the best option. We will give one of our prized core world seeds, Centauri One. What say you, Councillor Heinrich? Councillor Heinrich ran his hand through his hair. I'm sorry to ask, Senior Counselor, but um, is there something else that we can have instead? The Counselor was stunned. Counselor Heinrich just refused a core world seed, a paradise so perfect it was practically guaranteed to become a core world. But this was no issue for Senior Counsel Razak. He was well versed in interspecies diplomacy. He took a look at the data that he had on Centauri 1 for a moment to rectify his mistake. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Counselor. Centauri One is quite far away from the rest of human space. It would be hard to trade with or provide aid in a crisis. That was insensitive of me. Razik searched through some other suggested planets and picked a different one. How about Astra 4? It's a level 3 god world, so uh, not quite as good, but it is much closer and easier to defend. Senior Counselor Razik admitted the part about Centauri 1 being surrounded by core world systems, making it extremely well defended for the sake of diplomacy. He knew that humans could be particular and tried his best not to take offense. Councillor Heinrich took a deep breath. My deepest apologies, Senior Councillor, but uh, I cannot accept that one either. Senior Councillor Razik was stumped. He double-checked and then triple-checked the data on the world. Even with all of the standard humans have, there shouldn't be any sort of issue. Senior Councillor Razik swallowed his pride. Forgive me for asking, Councillor Heinrich, but what is wrong with it? Councillor Heinrich chose his words carefully. It is, uh, it, it, it's not suitable for, um, human interests. Senior Councillor Razik suddenly realized something. It was likely a cultural issue. Species are known to make strange decisions when some archaic aspect of their culture becomes involved, humans included. Senior Councillor Razik held up his hand. Say no more, Councillor Heinrich. I believe I understand. Sometimes things just get lost in translation. Uh, yeah. Senior Counselor opened up the hollow screen next to the human representative. I will give you the liberty of choosing your own reward, as it seems I lack the cultural knowledge to assign one. This was a little humiliating for the Senior Counselor as he prided himself at being extremely adept at being able to bridge such concerns. Counselor Heinrich smiled apologetically and then began to scroll through the list. Slowly, though, that smile faded into a frustrated frown. Eventually, the human reached the end of the list. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! But the third iteration, the human pounded his fist against the table as hard as he could. This strike set a crack all the way down the poor innocent furniture and startled all of the other counselors to their feet. After a moment, Councillor Heinrich also stood, but his was slower and more methodical. He then bent into a bow. 
I apologize. Uh, I'll pay for the table. Senior Counselor Razak nodded, steadied his hands, replaced his chair, and then sat in it. One by one, the other counselors followed suit, until everyone was seated again. The senior counselor was the first to speak, and asked the question on everyone's mind. I am sorry, counselor, but I don't understand. What did we do to upset you? Counselor Heinrich sighed. Ah, oh, it's not even your fault. Um, it's not like you knew any better. He sat up from his haunched position. I hate to be so blunt, senior counselor, but uh, stop sending us garden worlds. The senior counselor was speechless for a good few moments before he could regain his composure. Stop sending you the best worlds we have to offer. What about those other garden worlds that we gave you for previous commendations? Counselor Heinrich rubbed his temples. Uh, I was trying to be polite and subtly steer you towards solar systems with a planet that we could use. You can't use them, Senior Counselor asked, dumbstruck. Counselor Heinrich stood and created a large, hollow screen with his PDA, as he happened to be a conscientious objector to implant technology. The screen depicted a slideshow of property damage and harmed animals. All of these images were taken from the garden worlds that we've colonized at your behest. That is horrible! What happened? <sighs> the truth of the matter is that humans can't stand garden worlds. Um, the sheer peace of it causes us to become paranoid and eventually go insane. Uh, when absolutely nothing changes, humans eventually start to make up their own enemies, no matter how illogical. The human pressed a few buttons and created a hollow screen for each counselor. Please give this report a quick look through. The room was quiet for a good thirty seconds before the senior counselor had read through the highlighted part. I am sorry, counselor. The perpetrator suspected that his air conditioning unit was espionage. Uh, what does that even mean? Uh, I'd like to know that myself, senior counselor. This sort of thing happens, and every single time we send a group of humans to stay in a garden world for a term longer than three months, sometimes sooner. Senior Counselor Razak sat back in his chair and took his turn to sigh. <sighs> what do you suggest then, Counselor? Give us death worlds instead. Excuse me, what? Counselor Heinrich sat into his chair again. I'm dead serious. Our instincts are hardwired for it, and uh, if they're not tripped every once in a while, our instincts slowly start to think they're defective and lower the threshold until everything trips them off. Our constituent species will consider that an utter disgrace. There'll be an outcry that we're giving only the worst worlds to the humans, despite their contributions. May I offer a suggestion, then? A number of hours after the council meeting, there was a press conference to release to the public what decision the council had made. It is with great honor that on behalf of the Grand Alliance Council that I bestow 15 Explorer-class frigates and free reign to claim any and all planets in the Seventh Arm Outer Reaches to humanity. May they continue to be exemplary in this new age of exploration. Visop muted the screen so that he could talk over it. You hear that, Frank? They're putting all the onus on finding new planets on humanity. What selfless... A gasp broke, and the human bartender looked up at the screen. Fifteen! That many! Frank walked out from behind the bar and towards the door. Wait! What about my drink? Isaac called behind him. I quit! I only a reason I work here is because I barely flunked out space patrol exams. He saluted jokingly. See you in the stars, Faisop! End of story. Story number two. Standardized templates written by Whiskey Lullaby. Commander Joseph Zhao stared at the view screen with a slight grin. Ship readiness and conversion percentages rapidly increasing as the Terran Union prepped for war. Lugo, an attaché from the Galactic Council, 
waddled his duck-like form over to Zhao. Skies and lakes, how can your military grow so rapidly? he exclaimed. The translator, catching up to the burbling musical language of Lugos species, only after a few moments. Zhao just grinned wider. Watch and see, he said, tapping a few buttons. Instantly, the view screen shifted from the numerical data to cameras on the outside of the station. Hundreds, if not thousands, of human vessels of every size crowded at the docks. Crews of men and machines raced about, removing whole sections of crafts with a disturbing ease, before replacing friendly sleek sibling components with bulky, armored, sinister military ones. Cargo ships turned into heavily armed carriers in mere minutes. Starliners went from luxurious cruise ships to cruisers and even dreadnoughts. Tiny racing craft were fitted with larger reactors and weapons galore, becoming interceptors, bombers, and gunships. What? Lugo sputtered, feathers ruffling and his four eyes widened. You mean to say... He trailed off as Zal fixed him with an almost predatory stare. <laughs> yes, every human ship follows standardized modular templates. Don't need much of a fleet in peacetime, so it keeps costs down. But in war, <laughs> well, there's a lot of ships out there, a lot of humans just a bit tired of taking flack from some arrogant alien. A lot of people who still remember the first contact war and how much we lost. Now, um, you and your council have a choice to make. Join forces with us or, um, stand against us. End of story. I just want to thank the Tea Fight patrons and channel members. Bob the Dragon, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigon 95, Fudig Yol, Meridian 117, Alithia, Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albard and Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below, both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.